Hey there everyone, here's your review of Core Hunter from the Hero Factory Wave 4.5 Breakout series. Nah. Probably late to doing this review. Everyone's kind of done it already and I just want to give my take on them. So I just want to jump in real quick and do a little turnaround. And we'll go look at the pieces he comes with that I think are pretty interesting. So let's jump to that right now. And after a quick battery change, I am back to show you some new recolored pieces. First off, starting off with this little chest plate. It is a full black. I don't think we got this piece before, so that's why I'm showing it. Probably should have done some research, but I'm too lazy. These nice claw pieces that came out here at Vector 3.0 get a nice number of six. Always nice to have something like that. These aren't technically new pieces. These came out with the super build uh, Marvel guys. And they're just ar pieces of armor to attach onto the normal Hero Factory armor. I mean, it, it looks cool when it when attached and by itself. It looks like an engine block. I can't explain why I think that, but I think it does. It's, it's alright. You get two of those. Black paws. These are paws. That's what they were intended to be. They can be anything else if you're creative, but they're just paws. You get three of those, so that's cool. I don't think we've gotten this chest piece in black yet. I think it's one of the few Hero Factory chest pieces that are actually blank. There's no printing or whatever on them. So, hey, happy mocking. Also, I don't think we've gotten this in all black before. So, again, while well, I'm showing it, so cool to have that shield piece. Only real new piece is the head itself. Yeah, I think this is one of the few reasons people liked, um... Core Hunter at the beginning when they started showing the pre-release picks, He's like, he's got all these scopes on his head, and the, and the top here, it could be like, Ferno's head, where it can give him eyes. So, yeah, It's a nice looking head, but it's a lot smaller than I thought it was. It's kind of like the same effect with the Howl, with them when the Bionicle Stars came out. Granted, we all had expectations for that, thinking, oh, it's going to be a certain size, when it was actually like a third smaller. It's a smaller head than I thought, but it still looks... Pretty cool. There's some nice detailing in there. Nice sculpting for like vents and the scope eyes. Stuff on top, so that's cool. So let's put them back together and you know show off some posability. I lied. Posability and stuff I like about the dude as I go along with the posability itself. Starting from the ground up, the legs pretty obvious. Like a little nice hundred and thirty degree bend in the knee. Angles on a ball joint so it moves all around. And the leg on the hip moves all the way around. The leg itself, it looks... It looks better than what it would be with just two pieces of armor. This extra addition of the block piece makes it look more weighty. For a plastic that doesn't even weigh more than that, a pound. But hey, it makes it look a bit more beefier. And I think that's kind of cool. The torso area looks okay. I mean... If it wasn't for this chest piece here, he'd just kind of look a little bleh. But I can't really complain. The chest, the little extra chest piece really does help. If I can get that back on. There we go. Um, arms. This one's kind of hindered because there's a tube right here. So, well, you can get it all the way around if you want to. But, man, there's just a tube there. Um... Ugh, elbows are kind of weird. Like, you can bend them, but you just end up bending this instead. So it's kind of a double hinge joint going on. So that works. And you can rotate this around however you like. And the Xamarin rolled away. So I'm going to put that back in. And fire into the ground. So that's that. Other arm, shoulder's the same. This arm's kind of the same with double hinge if you wanted to. But it's mostly just meant to be on the side. So you got that for a 90 degree bend. And this is on a ball joint so it can move all the way around. And the shield pincer thing is okay. I kind of don't like the fact there's a random spike sticking out of the side. But I guess I can deal with that. Speaking of spikes, there are red spikes all over this guy. Everywhere. And <laughs> they kind of get in the way sometimes playing around with them, like, oh, you messed up one, you're gonna put it back. That type of junk. He also has the Hero Factory villain issue of having a really long neck when it probably really doesn't need one. I mean, that's cool, but he's got a hunch. You can bring that back or 
have it up and it just looks weird. And then you got this back armor piece. Which, uh, it's alright. This isn't supposed to be here. I just put the game piece on there for the hell of it. But you can move it around if you want, or you can move it down, whatever. Looks kind of weird. Also, there's a spare ball joint right there. It's just kind of open. Just like one small little hero factory. The, the, the small hero factory armor, just put it right there. Wouldn't be perfect. This guy is okay by himself, but you can make a few corrections to him if you wished. And all everything you need to do with him, you don't need any extra parts. You can mess around with everything you want, just with the PC he comes with alone to update him. So, let's get to revamping him. Now I know what you might be thinking. Bunny ears. But hear me out. I think it kind of looks cool. Yeah, first thing you really notice, he has little spikes sticking out of his head, which can resemble bunny ears. But I think it adds to the spike motif he's trying to go with to begin with, so I figured it add some spikes in his head. So, that looks kind of cool. Um, the back, I did move the paw piece down one ball joint, so it covers up both of them. And gives him more of a rounded back, so that's kind of cool. Um, the shoulder, I added the spikes from the, from the back, put it on the side shoulder. Makes it look a bit more menacing. Arms, nothing really changed. The legs I wanted to change a lot. This is the big thing. It kind of, I didn't like the fact there was like red with black armor and then a black leg with red armor with black armor on top of that. Looked kind of weird. But I figured let's just put the colors where they belong. Put the red on top and put the black on the bottom. The black looks, looks a lot beefier with the armor facing a bit more down. And the red on top. Kind of looks like he's wearing big boots. And I think that works a little better. I think he just looks a bit more menacing like this. Granted, to take the ears off, as it were. Like, you can just pull these right off. Make them look like that, and instead put them, like, I guess, here on the shoulders. It's ultimately up to you. This is just what I like to do, I guess. And you just make him do that. If you're not into the whole ear thing. But that's a nice little recommendation, I think. Just for using the pieces that he comes with. So, yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. So that was Coroner. He's actually a pretty solid villain. I was kind of lukewarm to him when I first saw him, but you know what? He really grew on me. He has some pretty good black pieces and good red ones as well, and he's got a pretty cool head. Is he worth the money for around 13 to 15 bucks? He's more worth it than Breeze. I think you get more of a piece value and more fun with him, but it's ultimately up to you. I'd say he's pretty cool to pick up, so go pick him up. I will give a link to the to where you can buy him in the Lego store. Um, granted, he's available at most retailers, and you can get him anywhere else. But I figured let's give a Lego some little love and just link to there. So yeah, he's a pretty cool set. I think you should all pick him up. He's pretty cool. And yeah, this is Shadow Gear 65 signing out, and goodbye. See you folks another time.